Robotics. I've never really understood what all the hype is about. So I've come to Bristol Robotics Lab to meet robotics engineer Silas Adekunle, who I hope will get me hooked on this obsession about building them. So robotics generally has three parts to it. First of all, you need the physical part, so how it moves, so the mechanics. And then on top of that, you need the electronics, so how it's thinking more or less, how the signals are passing through it. And then the software is the intelligence, so what do you do, how do you process that data? In this box is a Mechamon, short for Mechanical Monster, and this is education platform to get young people, well anyone really, into robotics. And so in here, inside this box, so these are all the parts that go into the robots. So four legs, four shields on the legs, so it's a bit like um, Big Hero 6, if you've ever watched that. First thing we'll do is, you see that, you just plug it in. And now it's a character, so it's moving, it's doing its own stuff. If I take the, this shield off, it's going to actually look and check like what's happened to my leg. And it's head is red, it's not really happy about that. And it's like, give me, give me my leg back, you know, ah, it's everything. It's it's having my a shield. Yeah, exactly. And if I put it, if I put it back, <laughs> now it's going to know that that leg's gone back on. And it's going to be like, oh, okay, I've got my leg. And it's green and it's happy. It's like, so we've got a tablet here. So in this uh, app itself, we've got a few different uh, ways you can interact with it and you're controlling it this way. So this is forward. Is there any way? <laughs> so it's doing a little wave and you see like uh, wow. even uh, Lucas is smiling because it gets a lot of character out. And, yeah. And so. What's well, itchy? Yeah, it's like scratching itself. Yeah. I love that. If you want it to be scared, like all jittery. Oh let my me God, see. there's so many. There are so many. You've never programmed before and you want to start figuring out, okay, how do I get this robot to do things for myself? So I'm just going to draw a line and get it to turn right. So it's simple, forward and to the right. And then we're going to get it to do a few things. I want you to change the head color to red. And then after you've turned, let's say, why don't we play an animation? Let's do splats. We're just... Yeah, yeah just saw we're that just, actually. Yeah, right at the top, yeah? Yeah. Okay, there, thick. Okay. And we're just gonna press play. It's gonna walk forward and it's tracking there. It's going to turn. So the head's turned red already. Let's just make sure. We go Not enough space. So if we go into the animate section, let's say I wanna just wave at the camera. This is where I'm starting from, like that. I record that as a position, and then I'm going to jump forward. Is this all in time? It's all in time, yeah. So this is after half a second, and then I want the leg to be here after one ah. second. And then I'm going to record that, and now we're going to play it. So it's going to start. So you go to a point in time. Yeah. You set where you, where you want, want it. it to be. You oh. record it, and then it transitions there. We need to get it to lean this way. So what we're going to do is first unlock this leg, kind of like that. And we're just going to jump forward in time. And we're just going to test that everything's working the way we want it to. Right? So just do, yeah. Okay, so let's record that. So our balancing is not quite right because it's not stable. Right. So now you have to go back and tweak the, the balancing. Yeah. So what we're going to do, back. yeah, further back, that's because it. Because this so is raised, so the, this is the raised. center of gravity exactly. is basically So changed. we need to compensate for oh that. Oh my God, yeah. this stuff is amazing. I know. So it is mechanical. Yeah. It, oh. So now that means we need to bring this joint here a bit more. And let's see if we fixed the issue. So it's, this is like debug debugging code. So better. But then we haven't given enough time for the other stuff. So you see how this can become quite this, a rabbit hole oh that you get gosh. down. It's about to go on a tour around the robotics lab. I think I'm about to be introduced to the whole range of robots that exist. Who knew? So here you're Ooh. looking at a swarm of oh, wow. en engineering. Yeah. So this is. Yeah, so you can I've, see. I've read so much about this. About, about swarm Is robotics, it inspired yeah. by locusts? It's inspired by the natural world. You could have one really expensive robot that does a really small subset of things, or you could have lots of cheap robots that could come together and become you know, stronger than the, the individual, the sum of their parts. How do they talk to each other? With robots like this, they'll have some type of communication system. So either infrared, it could be Bluetooth, it could be Wi Fi. Flying robots. 
So a lot of things happen as well where you do research of technology in environments like this. And then this, it becomes a company. And then it becomes a company and it becomes a reality exactly. so that, that way it can start having an impact on us. Everything here is about, we've moved from robots as assistants and mechanical systems that are standalone from humans to coming together and starting to interact in human space. The robotics lab is just absolutely mind-blowing, mm -hmm. but where is your yeah. work going now? So, so right now I'm focused more on you know, how can technologies that are associated with robotics. So robotics, as you saw, has lots of different elements from the hardware to the electronics to the software. And a key part of robotics is actually understanding the world and computer vision is needed for that. That means you're gathering data about what's going on in the real world and turning that into digital to then be able to understand it and take insight from that. We're now using computer vision to give them that extra assistance without even having robotics yet, you know, the moving parts. We're starting with the computer vision layer. We're using a, a, a system like this, it's called Lumi. So that's uh, what my new company has created. So it's a camera. So this is just a camera. Think of it as one of Lumi's eyes, but really the intelligence is in the cloud, the AI is in the cloud, but it uses these types of cameras to get that data and then send it into the cloud. So a scientist would be doing some work in a place like this, or an experiment would be running and they either have to sit here all the time to see what's going on, so there's some stuff going on in here, or you could just leave Lumi on the side or at the top, and Lumi would be monitoring that experiment for you, so that way, when you come back, all of that data is there. You've never missed anything. Now that data can help you to make your scientific knowledge even better, even more precise, even more accurate, so you can do your work better. As you can see how far we've come. So there, here's the evolution of robotic systems from the very, very early days. I now understand why I've never been bitten by the robotics bug. Yeah. Because yes, I know I understand the mechanical engineering, but then the electronics and the software, it's like woo! The very first kind of week in my robotics course, our lecturer, making sure that we have moral and ethical con considerations as we're building robots, because is it conscious, is it sentient? These are big questions that we have to start tackling That's as humanity. crazy. Yeah. Are we being humane towards to, robots? Toward, towards robots, yes. And, um, you know, the more lifelike they are and the, the harder they are to differentiate from something inanimate, the more you have to think about those questions.